sponsored by Academy of Screen Printing and Awards. Welcome into Sports Extra Overtime, a 30-minute show devoted to high school football. I'm Kurt Pegler. And I'm Patrick Cunningham. We're bringing you highlights and analysis of games from all over central Illinois. And we start our week two with a big game in Washington. That's right. The Washington Panthers taking on Kankakee, a matchup of state-ranked teams at Babcook Field. Tyler Humphrey, the Washington Panthers quarterback, keeps it there. This game was scoreless at halftime. This is early third quarter, driving again Humphrey. Then they're going to hand the ball to Kana McQuarrie. He's going to get inside the five-yard line where he's stopped the stall drives. Washington settles for a field goal, and that's the only points they get. They lose a tough one to state-ranked Kankakee, 7-3 the final. To the Big 12, 1-0 Normal West taking on 1-0 Bloomington. Quarterback back out to pass here, looking for his wide receiver. Finds him over the middle, takes a big shot, but he stays in bounds and holds on to the ball. West still driving, but can't find a man. He's going to do it himself. And he gets out of bounds, another first down. And now here comes the Wildcat defense. They're going to swarm Bloomington here for the sack. And then they're going to swarm again here on this next play. Normal West, your winners tonight. They are 2-0 with a win over Bloomington, 35-14. You know who else is 2-0? The unbeaten Normal Community Ironman who opened up Big 12 play on the road at Champaign Central. The Ironman wastes no time getting on the board. A few plays into the game, Brady Augston, a pick six. Steps in front of the pass, gets untouched into the end zone. For an early score. Next normal possession, Tommy Davis makes it look easy. He finds his way for six more. 14 0 Ironman just four minutes into the game. Part of a big night for normal community, Marquand Gary. He gets the carry, works around the defense and scores, and the Ironmen are 2 0 after a 57 6 win in Champaign. Pekin's home opener is against Belleville East in some non conference action. Now they're down here in the second quarter. Defense looking to provide a spark, and that's Landon Erlickson with the fumble recovery. Dragons trying to drive on their next possession. Luke Goss looking over the middle. He completes a pass to Frank Warfield. He is going to battle his way for his first down and drag some defenders with him. But Pekin cannot overcome a first half deficit and they fall 34 to 14. How about the Dunlack Eagles also playing at home for the first time, trying to move the 2 0 against Rock Island. They've got the Rocks backed up in their one yard line. First quarter, the Rocks trying to move forward, a fumble. It's recovered by Dizan, the casting of the Eagles, and Dunlap's in business at the Rock Island 1. Next play from scrimmage, Joe Weeks goes in, and it's a touchdown for Dunlap. Now, late in that first quarter, a much longer play. Kendall Netters from midfield. Look at this hole. He runs right through it. Sheds a would-be tackler, gets into the end zone. Dunlap is 2-0 after a nice win over Rock Island, 21-7. East Peoria playing host to Aurora Central Catholic in the home opener for the Raiders at Eastside Center. Good night for... Running back David Hartwell, he's going to get the quick handoff and look at him just scramble. He's deep into that secondary. This is a huge gain for the Raiders. And then here he is again, the junior running back is going to sneak his way into the end zone. This is a touchdown for East Peoria that puts the Raiders up 25 to 12. For the two point conversion, Hartwell gets his number called again. East Peoria is in the win column for the first time. Second effort, he's in 57 20. EP is a winner. Limestone in non-conference play at home against Galesburg, down 7-0 in the third quarter. Handoff up the middle here to Izzy Aguilar-Nunez. He's going to break for a first down, but the Rockets would turn it over. Next drive, Tejion McLean with the run outside. He has enough for a first down, but the Rockets unable to overcome some turnovers in that third quarter, and they are going to fall tonight to Galesburg, 41-7. Home opener for the Manual Rams taking on Champaign Centennial at that new Peoria Stadium turf. Quarterback Amari Breedlove is going to avoid the fresher, the sophomore. Tyree Porter is going to catch it on the other side of the field as the Rams trying to move that football. Breedlove then to Namalos Thompson who's going to barely hang on to it. He's going to run into the end zone. This is a touchdown for the Rams. Look at him dance around a couple of would-be tacklers. Good effort getting to the end zone. However, Centennial beats Manual tonight 35-8. New High won its opener and plays at defending state champion Springfield Sacred Heart Griffin in the Central State. Eight great start for the Pioneers. Alex Whelan over the middle, wide open is Cade Cunningham for a touchdown for the Pioneers. Then a great tackle for a loss here is going to be Cole Mecha and Drew Raider. Not fooled at all on the play action. That's going to come for a tackle for loss, but SHG comes out on top. They beat the Pioneers 35-17. How about some other scores from the big schools? Meta Mora 2-0 after a nice win at LaSalle, Peru, 37-6. Morton is 2-0 for new coach Adam O'Neill after a one-run or a one-point win, 27-26 win at Rochelle. Nice road win there for the Potters. A couple of other scores to share with you. Canton goes to Cole City, a shutout, 41-0. And Richwood's in the win column for the first time. Jim Ulrich's team goes to Springfield Southeast and is a road winner, 24-12. 
Let's move on to the small schools. Several Heart of Illinois Conference teams looking to start the year 2-0. and Yes, they are, and we start with two schools that won openers last week, Field Chris and El Paso Gridley. Titans on their first snap of the game here. This is going to be running back Skylar Clover. He is going to run the ball here into the end zone, follows his blockers, barely touched, and he scrambles his way all the way for an early touchdown. And field press quarterback Brady Russman, he's going to throw it to his wide receiver Josiah Johnson. Finds him over the middle, but quickly brought down. Then later for an El Paso drive, quarterback Camden Schumacher runs the ball, powers his way through the defenders, and it is all El Paso Gridley tonight. They win 42-8. to Now DMAC at home against GCMS in non-conference play. The Chiefs honoring nine-year-old Adrian Zare, who died this summer. Chiefs take the field with Adrian's number on their helmets, and they came to play against GCMS tonight. Second play of the game, Falcons run. Ball comes out. This ball is going to be recovered by Dane Lowry. Now the Chiefs would have to punt, but now it's the secondary's turn. Chuck Hathaway, the safety, gets the interception on the fourth down play. It goes back to the Chiefs, but again, another turnover play upcoming. This time from the special teams. Bad snap on the Falcons' putt. Lowry levels the punter. Great field possession for the Chiefs, and they finish off the drive with Tysol Britton. Look at that stiff arm. Gets into the end zone for the score. 16 to nothing winners, and the Chiefs are 2-0 for the first time in six years. Ridgeview Lexington playing Rock Ridge non-conference play, and it's going to be uh, the Minutemen that struggled. Uh, in the first half, Rock Ridge was able to gain an, uh, a 33-point lead going into the half. The Mustangs, I should say, the Mustangs were down 39-6 to at half, able to keep the Rockets from scoring in the second half, but just a rough night for Ridgeview Lexington as they're beaten at home by Rock Ridge tonight. In the Illini Prairie, 1-0, Central Catholic goes on the road to Rantoul. Saints quarterback Colin Hayes, he's going to come out and find Bennett Summers out wide on the screen pass. He's going to make his way following his blockers 20 yards for the touchdown. That made it 28 to nothing Saints. Then Hayes, he's going to take it himself this time after he can't find anyone open. Up the middle, then makes his way down the sideline. He takes it home for another score. It's 35 nothing Saints. They are rolling tonight. Another possession, Hayes, he's going to hand it off to Will Adelman. He takes it right down the middle into the end zone. Saints led 49-0 at the break. They win 56-0. They've scored a hundred, more than 120 <laughs> points in the first two games. The Saints are marching in. Yeah, that's how you get to 2-0. IBC looking for win number one of the year. They're playing at Monticello. The Grey Ghosts are Monticello uh, with the football here. The Grey Ghosts, how we're going to bat that pass down. Brooklyn uh, Clifford with the stop there. Then Bryce Radcliffe, the quarterback for the Grey Ghosts, he's going to find a man over the middle, and that is going to be a first down. Tough night for the IBC offense though. They're going to fall on the road to Monticello 52-13. Grego still looking for their first win of the season. Elmwood Brimfield Trojans looking for their first win of the year as well. They're taking on Illini West late in the first half. Max Keeneman for Illini West. Throws an interception. Bo Windish coming up. The Trojans taking over. They're down 22-14 at this point. Trying to score before the end of the half. Trojans quarterback CJ Ramirez. He's going to try and take it in himself, but he is going to be tackled short and the Illini West would hold on, and Elmwood Brimfield loses 34-14. to Unbeaten Farmington at home for game number one of the year. Their opponent is West Hancock. Early on is Jack Wheelwright getting into the end zone, and the Farmers have a 6-0 lead, two-point conversion fail. But West Hancock is marching the ball downfield. Second quarter, look at this in the red zone. Hunter Darsham of the Farmers picks it off, and he's going the other direction all the way back for a pick six. Farmington is now 2-0 after a 45-20 win at home over West Hancock. Princeville at home against Havana in the new Lincoln Trail Prairie Land Conference. First possession for the Princes. How about Logan Carruthers? He's going to see Tyshun Kaiser on a crossing pattern, and he hits him in stride. No one even near him. 87 yards, our longest scoring play of the night. Two-point conversion made it 8-0. Now after the Princes recover an onside kick, they're going to go to Geyser again, this time for 48 yards on the ground. What a night for the young man. Another big touchdown play, and Princeville wins 36-14. to And now some other small school scores from tonight. Tri-Valley 34-14 to winners over Clinton. They're 2-0. Prairie Central gets their first win of the Mike Goodwin era. 47-6 to winners over their rival Pontiac. Shelbyville 44-36 to winners over Eureka in a shootout. Coming up, we're